Middle grade was one of the most magical times of growing up for me. It was when I was introduced by my fifth grade teacher, Mrs. Boffman, to books like Bridge to Terabithia, Matilda, Island of the Blue Dolphins, and Trumpet of the Swan. It was when my best friend and I built a fort in a small patch of woods, exchanged locks of hair, and became blood sisters. It was when I first thought Jesse Fritch was cute and wondered and hoped and wished that he thought I was too. It was when I realized that I didn't just need to wear a bra, but I wanted to wear one. And when my friends and I would play M.A.S.H., you know, the mansion, apartment, shack, house game, with a hidden hope that someday, someday, we really would marry that movie star and live in a mansion in Paris. It was when I sat on the ledge between my parents and friends and decided on my own whose voice I would listen to. Life was magical and confusing and filled with every emotion on every extreme. It was a delicate time when my friends, both girls and boys, were transitioning in so many ways, and I right along with them. Middle grade writers, like middle grade readers, are a special breed. We must see the silly humor and boogers and farts, as well as feel the intense pain of a lonely lunch table, or a goodbye to a friend who is moving, or the loss of a grandparent we never thought could die. Though young adult may be hot right now and showing no signs of slowing down, we remain on the outskirts, much like our readers themselves, who hang in the balance between elementary school and high school, of childhood and young adulthood, innocence and experience, dependence and independence. So how do we write stories for this age? How do we create stories that make them laugh and forget, that make them cry and remember, that make them look at the murky, muddy mess of change with hope? We must approach our writing with three things as vital to our writing toolbox as a correct brand of jeans, the clean backpack, and the meticulously picked folders are for our audience. And that's the first thing we as middle grade writers must have when we write, respect. I know, I know, we've heard that word a gazillion times, and funny enough, it is the one trait that oftentimes gets most buried and muddled in the lives of our audience as they interact with teachers and parents. But it is not only something that our audience yearns for, but is something they need and require from us. Every event, every moment with family, friends, parents, teachers, or the first sparks of romance are felt at such an extreme with middle graders. I remember waking up and feeling excited, despaired, annoyed, giggly, worried, hopeful, insecure, confident, dreamy, nightmarish, awful, wonderful, ugly, beautiful, popular, unpopular, stupid, and smart, all within the first 15 minutes of walking through the heavy double doors of my school. And all of those feelings were real and true for me, and they are real and true for our readers at any given moment. So to have a teacher roll their eyes, or a parent say, you're just being emotional, or another adult shrug off their feelings as silly, is not only disrespectful, but is hurtful and puts a wall in between us and our readers that may never come down. No one wants their feelings to be laughed at, mocked, looked down on, or considered silly. So we must be careful to treat our main characters and our audience with the respect that they yearn for and the respect they deserve. And then we must remember our middle grade years with perhaps not necessarily a fondness, but with a profound respect, a respect for all that we went through and all that has helped us to become both good and bad. Yep, we must respect our middle grade years. Yes, I said it. And that is the second thing we as middle grade writers need to have. Because how can we respect our readers, their feelings, and their experiences if we don't respect our own journey through the bowels of middle grade, knowing that we made it through to the other side? This, of course, means pulling out the hideous pictures of big bangs, perms, tight-rolled stonewashed jeans, and finding them the beauty of what we went through, of what our audience is going through right now. We must see our, our years as middle graders as kind of like a mosaic. Mosaics are breathtaking things, aren't they? Bits and pieces of broken and colored glass put together in a way that you never think could be possible from the mess on the floor. We have to remember the bits of words, the ones that hurt and the ones that redeemed. The scent of the humid cafeteria, a fleeting vision of walking down the hallway, a snippet of whispered dialogue of he likes me, she likes me. Sure, some memories will make us cringe with embarrassment, and others will still bring a chuckle even after what feels like a zillion years. But each memory, every little tiny moment, forms how we think, what we are afraid of, how deeply we love, how fully we are willing to be loved, what we dream for, what we aspire to, what we think is laugh out loud funny or sobbing sad. Whether we like it or not, those middle grade memories, both ugly and beautiful, are a part of who we are, and they always will be. So what do we do with them? 
Well, as middle grade writers, we must smile at our, all our broken, misshapen pieces lying on the ground, pick them up, and like a mosaic, create a story that is a work of art. An art that brings hope, because that's what those broken pieces represent, don't they? And that's one of the aspects I adore most about writing and reading middle grade fiction. It's the hope that can be found somewhere inside, hidden inside the wardro wardrobe with a lion named Aslan, near platform nine and three quarters, with a dog named Win Dixie, a spider named Charlotte, and three unearthly strangers named Wh Mrs. What's It, Mrs. Who, and Mrs. Witch. There is hope. Like all of us, middle grade readers need hope, and maybe they need it even more than us, since they are at a time when they are first learning to navigate all the tremors of life all on their own. They need to know that this too shall pass, that somewhere beyond their bickering parents, their broken hearts, or their ruined friendships, that there is still hope and that, yes, they can make it through this, and they can overcome and come out on the other side. We need to infuse hope into our novels, however thin a thread it may be, because really it could be the thread that our reader readers hold on to and follow through the darkness of the cave until they are out into the light of day. And we need this hope not only in our novels and for our readers, but for ourselves as well, because Lord knows we writers are as anxious and insecure, as awkward and impatient as middle grade readers themselves. Many of you are sitting in front of your computer right now watching me and the other brilliant writers at WriteCon. You sit there and hope, hope, hope. Hope that someday an editor or an agent will say yes. Hope that you'll see your book sitting on a bookstore shelf, or better yet, in the hands of a young reader. Hope is what keeps us all, the published and unpublished, sitting at our desks, clicking words onto our screens. The hope that someday somebody will love what we've sent out into the world. Hope that maybe we've written something that will make someone laugh, or cry, or long for more. But it's hard, I know. Still, despite the changing trends, the dying genres, the one after the other, S-A-S-E, returned in your mailbox without words, dear author, sorry. Like the middle grade readers we write for, do not lose hope. And I know it's hard to keep heart when the rejection letters pour in, when your revision is a disaster, or you can't seem to make it past chapter five. Believe me, I know. And it's hard to keep hoping when each time you allow yourself to, it always seems to end in disappointment. Writing and getting published is hard. That's why so many people never do get to see their books on the shelves or in the hands of a young reader. It's much easier to give up, and it's not nearly so painful. But I'm asking you, just like I'm asking the middle grade audience I write for, to not give up and to not lose hope. So now, go sit down at your computer, smile at the page with hope, remember your journey with humor, and write to your audience with respect. Thank you.